Hello Euro lovers. Today we're going to do basic tire changing 101. The purpose of this is to just show you how to change really out a tube for newbies in case you're on the side of a road you don't have a spare tire. That's what's going to go flat. Not your tire. It's going to be your tube. So I want to emphasize that and show you some of the basic tools you need and some techniques that hopefully are useful to you. And um, and then actually I'm swapping out a tire from my uh, from my sidecar, uh, so we'll be doing that also. So what I want to do first is just show you some of the basic tools that I carry with me in my tool rack and my tool roll, and tools that are godsend to you. First, this is the uh, basically these are the irons that came with. Uh, the Ural. I swapped them out for these spoons. I like them a lot better. They're a little smaller, easy to operate. This is a nice core, stem core remover. It's great. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. You can all different types, but I would definitely want to have one of those on hand. You can obviously you need a needle nose pliers to get your cotter pin or your R pin out. I use R pins because they're removable and uh, you can replace them a hundred times and they're not a problem. This is a godsend. This is a, uh, it's a fishing, what do they call it? A uh, core, core stem fisher or something like that. I'm not sure what the name of it is, but anyway, this is you feed it into your tube uh, in order to get it through the rim. You can do it without this tool, but you will add an hour and you will increase your vocabulary on swearing. So I would definitely recommend getting that tool. Uh, so real quick, just going here, some of the other uh, items I have in my little little bag here, yay. I have uh, baby powder, okay, I'm gonna need that for the rims and the tube itself. And this, if I were doing the, if I were doing the, um, the pusher, then I would use this to uh, jack, uh, to help get the uh, tire on to the, uh, onto the flat tar part up here and then uh, push it up at the same time pulling on the stand uh, to get it up. But you need a block of wood unless you're extremely strong, which I'm not. And then this little gadget right here, it's good to keep, uh, keep with you. And this just uh, basically, uh, you put it at your front wheel, obviously to keep the thing from sliding. So let me get this all set up and we'll get going. Oh, I've already done some of the preliminary. I've already jacked up the uh, sidecar and we're just gonna, all we're gonna do here is remove this, which I can do in a hand in a second. And we'll just remove that, remove the sidecar and get going. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, uh, I use this as uh, my work area for uh, taking on and, and putting off the tires or changing out the tubes. You can do a tool, there's a tool in the toolkit for this, but I just find putting pressure on that and rotating the thing all together, it loosens it enough and then I can just unscrew it and I can put it back the same way. So that's an easy thing to do. So I have that. And after multiple times of uh, forgetting, I do have a removed plastic rim on the, on the spare tire because you will not get it on <laughs> with, with, it, with it attached. All right, now we're gonna take out the cotter pin or the R pin over here. Again, reusable, so you want to use those. The castle nut. Some people tight, tighten these within an inch of their lives. I just tighten it hand tight, try to line it with the hole, and then just unscrew it. I've never had an issue. Um, there may be a detriment to doing it this way, but both my um, pusher and the sidecar, I just do hand tightness. I, I see no reason to, to get it any tighter than that. I haven't, I've never seen an advantage to it. So anyway, so let's remove the tire. So the tire's out. Okay, now, put this up. Oh, first we're gonna, now we're gonna do two things here. Let's bring it up here, take this off. And get my, get my core remover. Just put it in right there like that. Ready? 
Okay, now that the air is out of the tire, we gotta break the bead. And on 308s, 307s, really easy to break the bead. Just I just step on it, not an issue in here. You wanna break it on both sides, kinda walk around, and the bead is broken. Remove the nut here from the valve stem. As it rolls on the floor over here. Fortunately, I've got a dozen of those. All right, and now we can begin. So, getting out my three handy dandy spoons. I start at basically the stem up there. Put the first one in. Pull it, but I'm gonna have to do two at a time. Pull them up. Put them in as a spacer. Put them loose. And just work my way around. And actually, once it's going, it should be. Okay, for those of you that need to only re replace your uh, your tube, this is as far as you need to go with these steps. Because now what you're going to do is you're going to push the valve, you're going to push this through, get it back in there, and then you are going to grab this baby and pull them out. Okay. So that's it for him. He goes over there. All right, now I've got to get the underside out. And because I don't do this a lot, sometimes I have to rethink about what I'm doing. So bear with me. Even though I did this a couple weeks ago, I still forget exactly what I need to do here. So I just need to get this in there. So what you're doing is you fish it in and you're gonna feed to the underside of the lip of the tire. And you can see it coming out right there. I don't know, you may have to like come down and see it, I don't know. See it coming out, see it right there. Okay, so, so we got one. Where are my other tools and stuff? All right, so there's one. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing now. I'm gonna put another one in loosely as I get the first one. I've got to do two, so I got those. And sometimes when you're doing this, you have to let it sink back in a little bit to get his buddy, and then they all, they all come out together, in theory. Okay, so I got two right there. should almost be able to just take it out. All right, that's it. That's how easy it is to take off a tire on a Ural. All right. Now, once it's out, I'm looking at the uh, rim strip here. I don't see any problems with it. It looks in good shape. So I'm gonna leave it. I have no problems uh, with the way it is. Okay, here's the new tire. And what I wanna do on this, a couple things, one, I'm probably gonna, uh, probably, people will say I shouldn't, but uh, I don't care. I'm gonna reuse the uh, tube. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a little rusted, but, and I don't think I have another uh, tube. That's really the reason uh, I didn't plan this properly. But it's no, I've used reused tubes all the time, so I'm not that worried about it. So my baby powder, what I'm gonna do is I am going to put it around the edge of the tire. Because the reason you want to do this is you want to have this rubber slide easily on that rim 
as you're putting it because what will happen is as you are reseating the tire it will secure itself and you will have to go back and break the bead on it you're just going to have to there's no way of getting around it so you're going to have to go ahead and do that so i like the baby powder because it's water degradable it's not going to last around some people use soap uh soap just i don't know you can use whatever you want you just want something um, you can put on here the baby powder is nice i can carry it with me and it's not an issue and then i'll go ahead and put some baby powder on the inner tube um, just so when it's in the tube um, it can move a little bit as i need to position it again it's not that big a deal but uh, that's just something i do i don't know if i need to others can chime in uh, but it works for me this is what works for me so this is what i'm doing all right so he's coated he's coated and i can powder my butt if i need to later all right so I'll go ahead and put this guy on come over this way. I don't know if you can, how much you can see over there. Fly guy is the uh, is the producer here, so any critique on film angles is uh, you can get on him. <laughs> so boom, done. Nothing easier than that. So that's on. Now you got to put this baby on. Now when you're putting these things on, you don't have a lot of room to play in there. If you do not have this fishing tool to get this through that opening, again, you can do it, and it's on YouTube, and people show you how to do it, but oh my God, it is unbelievably hard. So, what you want to do is save yourself years of enjoyment by pushing that through, and hopefully the rim is not stopping me. There we go. Oh yeah, that's important when you put a new rim strip on or something, make sure it doesn't block that hole. Um, obviously, are you gonna have a bear when you get to this far of getting that stupid thing out so you can you can get the fishing tool in. So it takes a little bit, even, even though that's a small thing to have to grab, I have no, ah, it's, man, this one's getting a little bit tougher. Let me... This is, uh, so push that in a little bit further. Okay, so he's in there a little bit more. There we are. I didn't push it enough. So, I got that. And what I'm going to do is it just screws into here. Okay. Actually, I think when I do this, I didn't do it this way last time. I'm going to try something. This is an experiment. I'm going to try to do something really quick here. Let me get mine. Oh, if you don't have one of these, buy it. It's made by Slime. It is an air compressor, and it's worth its weight in gold. You just carry it with you. So we can cut, you know, let me set it up. Cool. I was just wondering if there was a way to put the uh, stem valve back in there and then insert this, but you can't. Uh, because you rotate that, it rotates the stem, and you can't put air in, so blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I've never done it that way, but I was just looking, and I said, well, let me just look and see. But anyway, so you can. So anyway, I'm going to, so lining this up there to there. So I'm lining up as close as I can. Pulling on my little, my little handy-dandy handle here. This is going to go in. That's not. This is going to go in a little bit. Um, Boom. All right. Now, pull this, and voila, it is out. And this is where I take a little nut, and I'm going to put it back on this thing so I don't lose it. Because that is <laughs> extremely disappointing. The trick is to hold that. Now what I should have done is probably put this in a little bit more, but I can hold it like that. 
I guess I could have put the whole rim in, a, I mean the tube in, and that probably would have made this a little bit easier. That's all I need. I just want to keep that from going back in. So, we just carefully slide this all back in. All right. Okay, now, when you are just having to replace your tube, again, this is as far as you this is as far as you would have to go. You would take it, remove the tube, put a new tube in that has a puncture. So, you don't have to go with replacing the entire tar like I did. Okay, now, this thing's bent a little bit and there's a little, uh, there's a little binding in there. So, that's when I take out my, uh, I'll put my uh, core back in. And I'm just going to put a little bit of air in. I don't need a lot of air. I just want a little bit in there. Put him in. He screws back in like that. Okay, he's in. Go right there. Let's go down here. Like that. Putting a little bit in, I don't need a lot. Okay, now I'm gonna feel around and make sure this thing isn't bound up. Which it actually feels like it is. Okay, well, what I'm gonna do is take it out from there. Again, when you don't do this a lot, eh, sometimes you run into these things. I think I'm making it worse. We have to cut this part and redo it. <laughs> this went flawlessly last two weeks ago and did it down at Fly Guys. There we go. So it's going in. All right, everybody's in there. Just feel around. Everyone's smooth, everyone's happy. All right, now we got that. Ta da! Okay, now we're gonna put this back on. This side won't go on quite as easy as the other side, but it's the basic principle. I start at the valve again. See this? And I do the first one. Put it around. Drop things. Another one. Drop him. Stay, stay. Now, uh, Tomcat Fixer demonstrated this tool, and what was it called again? Bead breaker. The bead breaker. And boy, I'll tell you, that thing makes short work of doing this job, but I try to do this as if I were always in the field, and I'm not going to carry it. It's a relatively large tool, but it just hooks on the center. You can't use uh, the uh, center stand like I'm using, but it goes in the axle hole, pushes against the edge, and you just ratchet it, and it pushes it down, and it's a beauty. Um, but I don't, I'm not going to use it. Do this. Keep that one there. Well, there's also a pretty cool tool called a bead buddy. Yeah. That locks into your spokes there to keep the bead from separating as you work your way around. Oh, okay. All right. Well, like I said, uh, there's a lot of different tools. There's a lot of different tools out there that you could try. You could try not to kill yourself. Those are always helpful uh, tips. There you go. Help if I have this locked. Oh, Nobody's going to accuse us having production values that are too high. No, no. Production values and uh, expertise. Uh, there's, no, there's, there's no problem with that. Now, here I'm getting, it's getting tight at this last little bit. Okay, that's, ooh, that's tight. What happens is this sets, 
So you gotta break the bead. And that's important, you gotta break the bead on this side. And you can leave, it's not gonna go anywhere. And I take it over and just make sure the bead is broken on this side also. Because it'll catch and then you will have a hell of a time getting that on. But with those both beads broken now, see how much easier now that goes? Boom. Like that. I'm not saying you're not gonna get it easy, but just take little bites, just like eating an elephant. Come on. If you're in too much of a hurry, what's going to happen to the tube where those uh, irons there? Well, that's why you want to put a little air in if you can. But usually, um, you just put them in a little bit. Just got to be careful. But if you have a little air in that tube, these won't catch it. Okay. And you don't put them in real far. Make sure you don't. Okay. And that is basically it. Except for that little piece that I decided not to cooperate. Okay, and that is how you change a tire on a Ural. And then you just go like this, bounce it around so everyone sits up properly in it. All right, so he's done. Now, what I use, I don't use weights and I don't use uh, Dyna beads. I use this stuff called Ride On. It's great, coats the inside of the tire but it also balances the tire. So it'll prevent small leaks. Yeah, I mean, I barely ever lose air in my tires, maybe over a period of a month, just a little bit, but it just helps and it's just easy to put on. So we'll cut here, I gotta cut it. Does it start with fresh numbers every, yeah. every cut? Okay. Yeah. okay, ready? Yeah. All right. Uh, a little trouble with the uh, camera there. No. Uh, anyway, with the camera using now. this, it's not a high power thing, but it'll get it, the job done from empty to the pressure you want. It takes around eight minutes or so, so we decided to cut that out. So what I'm doing now is I got it pretty darn close. Um, I measured it like 32. I just bring it down a little bit. I run it at 30 on the, uh, on the uh, sidecar, 36 on the pusher, and uh, 32 on the front. Um, the front, I've always read, same with my wife's BMW, the front has less pressure, so it absorbs the potholes and obstructions in the road easier, so you don't want a lot of pressure on that. I run 36 on the back, only because the tire says 36 PSI cold. So I'm not an engineer, but somebody that designed this was, so I go with that, but your, your mileage may vary. A lot of people like to run 40. Nobody's ever killed themselves, so, but anyway, so that's why I run that. So the last, oh, okay, another thing I do is um, this nut, I leave a gap in there, and I got this from Van, and it made a lot of sense, because I lost two tires. I had two uh, where the stems were ripped off the tube. And he suggested, and I haven't had a problem since, is leaving that flex in there, because the tube will move. And by leaving this, it allows the tube to move around side to side, maybe a little back, a little forward, depending on loads and turns and everything like that. But you're not going to rip it from the uh, tube itself. So that's just a technique he told me. I've used it, and I've never had an issue since. So I would recommend it keeping it loose. It doesn't hurt anything. There's no reason, no, no reason to tighten it up. So we are done. Um, because we did this in kind of segments, I'm not sure of the total time, but I'd be surprised that this whole thing took us more than 10 minutes or 15 at the max. So it's not that long. It's easy to do. Um, you should practice at home to, do a, to put your tubes on because you will have a flat and you may not be near anyone that can fix it. So just good to do that. So make sure I got that on all the way. He's there. Uh, that's fine. There's the hole that I want to line the arnet up. So we're just going to screw this guy back on. Again, I just do hand tight and I'm looking for the hole. Let me adjust that. Oh, there it is. There's the hole there. See, it's still hand tight. There's the hole. To get from that opening, all the, you know, get the next nut over there, um, yeah, it'd be ridiculous. So that's good enough. It's not going anywhere. That's just to keep 
to me, it's just to keep the darn thing from sliding off. So that, my friends, is it. I want to thank you uh, for Loki Boy Productions, <laughs> Fly Guy, our uh, lovely cameraman behind the scenes. Can't see him. But anyway, uh, hope it was beneficial. And uh, feel free for those out there to chime in with other uh, tips. Thank you. Okay, hey, one uh, quick thing I just want to mention too, for especially for newbies, uh, if you have a spare, grease it, okay? Because you don't want to be out in the middle of nowhere swapping your tire and you don't have any grease on the splines. So just go ahead and pre-grease it and uh, it just sits there. It'll collect on the, on, the, on the little rim, little tube there, but who cares? So anyway, so that goes there. Make sure that's tight. Top back on. And that's kind of snug, and then I can just I just rotate the whole thing and boom. He's not going anywhere. So that is the end.